So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us with our junior kickoff this year. We're so happy to have uh, the opportunity to present this to you all um, in a format where you can go back, rewind, fast forward, um, and watch it as many times as you might need to. Um, so again, thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Melissa Martin. I'm one of the guidance counselors um, at the high school, and we have Jane Jones here with us as well, one of the other guidance counselors. Um, we also have Patrick McNally here with us. He is an admissions counselor from Boston University, um, and I will introduce him in just a minute. Um, first, what I just wanna mention is that we want all of you to know that everyone is at a different place in the college thinking process. Um, and so no one is behind. This really truly is the kickoff. Um, and so we're just gonna give you some basic information today just to help you all start to think about uh, what your plans might be for, um, for after high school. So we have a lot of great things coming down the pike. You each will be meeting individually with your guidance counselors. Um, to talk about your future plans. We have another college application process uh, video that we will be sending out that gives much more detail about our specific process at Andover High School for college applications. Um, we will be having a resume writing workshop, a college essay writing workshop. So there's so many things coming down the pike, um, not to overwhelm you, but really just to help guide you every step of the way. Um, we're excited for it as counselors. We love it. It's, it's a part of our job that we really, really enjoy. So we're very lucky to be able um, to be here with you. So having said that, we want to jump right on in. Um, so we have Pat McNally here. So his title is that he is the Senior Associate Director of Admissions at Boston University. So we're super lucky and glad that he's with us. Um, he has been employed there for 32 years. In his current position, he manages the application review process. Prior to coming to BU, he taught high school English for several years at his alma mater, Bishop Connolly, in his hometown of Fall River. So again, we're so happy that Pat is with us. Um, he's so knowledgeable and, you know, we're just so lucky to kind of be able to hear, you know, what's, what's going on in the college admissions world. So we're going to pass it right on over to him. Thanks, Pat. Great. Thank you, Melissa and Jane. It is great to be here with you today virtually. I'm sorry I'm not able to be with all of you in person at Andover High, but uh, hopefully that is something we will be able to transition back to next year. Well, my purpose today is to try to provide you with some insight on the college search process. And really, my ultimate goal is to give you some information that is going to help you as students and parents in a little over a year from now to find the college or university that is gonna be the right fit for you. The place that's gonna allow you to grow, the place that will allow you to expand your horizons and also the one that will allow you to prepare for the future. So what I'm gonna be focusing on in the next few minutes uh, is on those areas that I feel you really need to consider to conduct an effective college search. And also as part of this, I'm gonna be highlighting some of the areas that my colleagues and I at colleges and universities take into consideration when we're reviewing applications. I'm also gonna be discussing, frankly, how the current pandemic has changed and in some ways has enhanced the entire college search process. But at this point, I'm just gonna share my screen with you to bring up a few points. Let's see. As always, this doesn't always work the way we want it to work, so just bear with me for one second. Try this one more time. All right, there we go. The, the reliance on technology these days is just wonderful. Well. While I represent Boston University, as you can see from the banner behind me, and I'm going to be using a few familiar examples from my own experience, what I'm really going to be discussing today is a search process from a much wider perspective. And while the world that we live in right now is different than it was a year ago, and it's different than it will be a year from now, I think it's really important to realize that many of the things and many of the aspects of the college search process remain the same. One of those is that the start of the college search process 
it is a terrific time to do a very good self-assessment, to stand back and sort of take stock of your life and what the future might look like, and asking yourself a series of questions. For example, what are some of your interests? What are those things that you really like to do? And that can be, what are those things you like to do academically? What are your favorite subjects? But also personally, what are those activities that you really like and that you get pleasure from engaging in? What are those things that excite you and really make you come alive? As part of this, what are some of your strengths and weaknesses? Taking an honest assessment of what you're good at um, and again, that might be in terms of academic subjects. It might be in terms of athletics or the arts. And what are those things that maybe you're not as good at? And maybe those things that you might like to improve on. Perhaps in the next few years, you'd like to improve on uh, getting to know other people a little bit better, maybe getting more involved in the arts. So be thinking about some of those types of things. And also, what are your goals for college? I realize that this is a pretty big question, but in the next four years or so, what do you hope to get out of college? What are you thinking about preparing for? That might be going on to graduate school. It might be law school or medical school, or it might be preparing for a career. If you could look into the future, what do you really hope to, uh, to accomplish by the time that you're done with college? And realize that many of these things are gonna change over the next couple of years. Now, along with this, as you answer some of these big questions, there are some factors to consider as you look at colleges. First of all, from a sort of a real estate point of view, location, location, location. Where do you think you might like to go to college for the next four years? And that takes a couple of different uh, categories. Are you thinking about an urban school? So someplace like mine, Boston University, that the city is right outside your door every day. Are you charged up by the energy of an urban environment? It's not for everybody. Maybe you'd like a suburban school, someplace that is outside a city, so you have, to have access to all of those things, but you're actually not right there in the middle of it. Or do you want something that's a bit more rural, very much removed from any urban areas, a place where the college is really a world unto its own? And this goes back to some of those, assess those personal assessments. What is the environment that you're most comfortable in? Also, the distance from home. Um, would you like to be sort of close to home? Maybe you want to live at home and commute to school. I think one of the things to consider is that we have a wealth of riches right here in New England, New York, and New Jersey. Just within a short driving distance, you'll find some of the best universities. Now, maybe you don't want to live at home, but you want to be sort of close. Someplace that is maybe an hour or two hours away, someplace where you can go back to and get a home-cooked meal and drop off your laundry, but still be far enough away that mom and dad aren't dropping in on you all the time. So again, you have a lot of options to choose in in that sort of range, or maybe you want to be far, far away. Um, you want to look at a place that is on the other side of the country, or maybe even overseas. That's great, it, but it's important to realize that this is probably going to have an impact on how you conduct your college search. Now, another factor to consider in terms of location, in addition to location, is size. Um, are you interested in a place that is small, where you will get to meet everybody out there? A college or university that might be a little bit medium size, or like my own institution, a large university. We have about 16,000 undergraduates. And in terms of, the, we're on the small side of large. There are institutions out there that will have 25 or 30,000 undergraduates. Um, realize that there are colleges and universities out there that are as small as Andover High School and others that are larger than the town of Andover. Now, also consider on the large size, attending a university like a BU is someplace where you might be part of a larger university, but have a smaller, con a smaller context within that larger institution. You might be attending a large university, but be part of a nursing program with maybe only 40 other students or, or a secondary education program where you build that small community, but still have the resources of a larger institution. Now, another thing to consider when you're looking at factors for colleges and universities, student body. Who is at this institution? Um, where are the students coming from, for example? Are they mostly local students? Going back to that idea of living close to home. Is it a place where most, mostly they're uh, local commuting students who come from the same area that you do? Or is it a national population, students from all over the United States? 
And also increasingly, as many of you know, uh, many of us have large international populations. Um, at Boston University, about a quarter of our students actually come from outside the United States. So that's one factoring, considering where the students at that institution come from. Because along with that, you have to ask yourself, do you want to be with students who are like you? And that's perfectly fine. Do you want to be with students who share some of the same interests and background as you do? Is that a comfort zone for you? Now, in addition to that, do you get charged up by people who are not like you? Um, do you want to meet students who um, perhaps come from different backgrounds? Considering the opportunity to meet students from, um, from different types of backgrounds could have a major effect on your, on your education. Um, and it really is just meeting those students is an education in itself. So I think getting a sense as you think about the self-assessment of the types of people you're most comfortable with, and again, um, would you like to expand your horizons and have the opportunity to meet different types of people? Now, some other factors to think about is the campus environment. Um, what happens on this campus? What, uh, what's going on there when you are, in many cases, might be living there? And if you are, what is residence life like? For example, does this institution guarantee four years of housing on campus? or maybe it's three years or two years. If it isn't four years on campus, are they gonna give you the opportunity to uh, find housing off campus? And also, what are residence halls like? There was a time when I and many of your parents went to colleges and most of the residence halls were strictly dormitories, two students to a room and then uh, 40 or 50 students on a floor. Um, but many times we've expanded our housing. So it might be suite style accommodations or apartment style accommodations. Are you gonna get to try different types of housing while you're there? Um, also, activities. Um, what would you like to participate in? Going back to that idea, what are you good at? Um, outside of academics, um, do you like to play sports? Do you like to get involved in arts, community service, social justice or political activities? What type of outlets does, does this institution offer you? And how available are they for you to get involved in? Um, so that's another important factor for, to take into consideration. And also, what are the facilities like? Um, if you're interested in sports, are their athletic facilities uh, modern? Are they accessible to all students? Um, are they open to students beyond recruited athletes? Um, what are fields like? So be thinking about that. Going to colleges, academics are going to be important, but uh, most of your time is going to be spent outside the classroom. So what types of facilities and activities do they offer you? Now, obviously, as I've said all along, academics is going to be the most important aspect of going to college. Um, so there's a few different things to consider when you're looking at the academic offerings of any institution. First of all, and this might go without saying, but do they offer what you want to study? Chances are, if you're looking at biology or psychology or English, yes, they do. But if you're looking at investigative journalism, if you're looking at neuroscience or architecture, then there's going to be fewer institutions that offer those types of subject areas. So looking at that is very important. Um, you don't want to be there in the, uh, after a month and find out that they're not going to have the, uh, you're not going to have the chance to study what you've been passionate about. Now, along with this, maybe you're undecided. I know at BU, about a third of our students each year who come in aren't quite sure what they want to study. If you are one of those students, how, is, how open is the institution to, to undecided students? Um, do they welcome you? How long do you have before you have to make up your mind on a major? Um, what type of support are you going to have in exploring those uh, different subject areas that you might be interested in? And do they have a good advising system? Uh, many institutions give you until the end of your sophomore year, but that's not always the case. So that if you are undecided, be thinking about how that institution uh, advises and supports you. Um, also, just going to go back for a moment, a couple of variations on this. Um, how open uh, is the school to uh, considering uh, you changing majors? You might not be undecided. You might right now want to come in with a major in English, but then you discover film or you discover business. Is this institution open to you being able to change majors, both close majors and also maybe uh, larger changes within that institution? Um, so that's going to be uh, Academic flexibility is something to consider, even if you feel that you are set on what it is that you want to study. Also, how open are they to combining areas? 
Um, I know at an institution like BU, many of our students do majors as well as minors between institutions. It might be to major in economics, but also to do a minor in advertising in a totally different division of the university. If you're thinking about doing those types of combinations, do they support those? If you're thinking of doing a dual or a double major, do they support those? And are they gonna give you the opportunity to be able to graduate on time? So thinking about that idea for flexibility and combinations of different areas, it gives you a lot of different options. Also, who's teaching the classes? What is the faculty like? Um, are you, are you gonna be taught by people who are full-time faculty members? How are graduate students used? Many of us at universities uh, have a, a, a wide array of graduate students and they support academic studies. But are you gonna have the access to full-time faculty members? Um, and also, along with this, with the academic areas, what is the class size like? Um, don't assume that a large institution has enormous classes. Again, I'm gonna fall back on my own experience, but at Boston University, we have 16,000 undergraduates. Our average class is made up of 27 students. There are a lot of institutions out there that will be significantly smaller that will have larger cla average class sizes. So be thinking about what that environment is gonna be like in terms of what you're gonna be studying and do you have access to the faculty? Um, again, at BU, our uh, student to faculty ratio is 10 to one. It's good to find out about what that is of the institutions you're looking at because that will speak to how well you're gonna be supported academically, both in terms of just seeking out professors, but also in terms of academic advising which is going to be a very important part of your support in those first couple of years as you determine what your area of focus is going to be. Also, academically, are you a student who might want to do research? Um, this might be in the sciences, but it also might be directed at an area like communication or the arts or humanities. Does the institution that you're looking at support the opportunity for undergraduate research? Also, many students increasingly will do internships beyond the classroom. This is particularly important if you're going into a professional area of study. Might not be as important if you're studying English or art history, but internships will be important if you're looking at business or communication, healthcare or engineering. So be asking what opportunities for internships are available. Does the institution have partnerships with local businesses? Um, and how many students do internships? Um, so that is gonna be an important part of your education. Again, especially if you're looking at some of those professional areas. And along with this is the location of the institution. If you're in a city or an urban, close to an urban area, do you have access to the, to, the, to the businesses in that area? If you're studying in a rural area, how do they make those internships happen? Also, very important category is the selectivity of admission. Take into consideration, and this is where you'll work with your counselors, but take into consideration um, the profile of the admits of this institution. How do you fit that profile? Are you a realistic candidate for consideration for admission to the institutions that you're looking at? What is this school looking for? And what they're looking for might be different from one major to another. What an institution might be looking at for a student who's studying graphic design could be entirely different from a student who's studying biomedical engineering or maybe film. Be thinking about if you fit into uh, that model of what this particular institution is looking for. And I'd also advise you to be realistic about that. Now, there are a wide variety of ways for you to find out about the colleges that you're interested in. Um, first of all, for first impressions, family, friends, and alums of the institution. You're probably already forming impressions about some of the places you're looking at from the, um, from the insights of the people who are closest to you, the people who really love the institutions that they've been affiliated with. And that is a good, broad, and first step in learning about those institutions. But it's only a first step. Um, if you are really diving into your college search, it's important to get a variety of different perspectives. And I think one of the most important perspectives and one of your best resources are gonna be your counselors at Andover High. You are just incredibly lucky to have dedicated and knowledgeable counselors who are gonna be an incredible resource to you in the coming year. They have a wealth of information about a wide variety of colleges and universities, both in the local area as well as nationwide. And they have a familiarity with the students who have been admitted and attended those institutions. 
So they have, going back to one of my earlier points, they have a really realistic sense of who might be competitive for an institution and also the types of students who have been happy at those institutions. They are also gonna be able to appoint you, point you to a wide array of outstanding guides and websites. So if you leave with no other piece of advice today, um, my best piece of advice is to trust the guidance that they are gonna be providing you over the next year. They will prepare you well for the decisions that you have ahead of you. And also, I think it's important if you haven't already, to reach out to colleges and universities. Many of you are probably already receiving paper mail and email from colleges. Um, but it's important if you haven't heard from places that you're interested in to get on those mailing lists. You might be hearing from places that you never have heard of before, but you're also not getting contacted by the places that you really wanna go to. So oftentimes if you reach out to websites and fill out an online form, that will allow you to keep in contact with that institution. Um, the other piece of advice I would give you is if you haven't already done it, have a dedicated email address for the college search process. Um, something that you will dedicate only to this. It isn't one that you use for shopping or travel or for other things. You really just dedicate this to the college application and search process um, because it is going to be one of the main ways that colleges will communicate with you. I know email is sort of an old fashioned technology, but it is the main way that we keep in contact with most of our students out there. Um, so create that dedicated email address and also check it on a regular basis because not only are you gonna get information about uh, colleges now, after you apply to colleges, it's gonna be the way that we communicate with you about the status of your application and how to take the next steps for enroll. Now, the other thing that I just wanted to touch on, and this is one of the things that has probably changed the most, is how you connect with colleges. Um, one of the things that has really changed tremendously in the last eight or nine months is how students inter interact with the colleges that they're interested in. Uh, the personal contact of meeting college reps at fairs and going to campuses does not exist at the moment, as most of you know. Um, however, colleges across the country, and this is the good news, colleges across the country have really reinvented the process through a wide array of virtual programming. Um, it has been really, a, as difficult as this time has been, it has been a revolution for us in college admissions in the way that we have developed programming for our students who are interested in us. First of all, there are group information sessions. There have always been group information sessions, but they've usually been in person on college campuses. But right now they're virtual sessions where you can hear from admissions staff as well as students. In addition to that, there are meetings with students. Um, one of the things that a lot of us have done to compensate for the fact that we can't welcome you to our campuses is setting up the ability for you to do one-on-one -on -one meetings with um, some of our students. Um, also, there are a variety of open houses. This is a way to uh, get a longer and deeper dive into a particular college or university. A group information session will probably last from 45 minutes to an hour and have some questions and answers. But an open house gives you maybe two hours of time with that institution where you will not only hear from admissions representatives, but you also might have a full student panel or a faculty panel. So somebody will be speaking to you about a particular area. Um, also, one of the things that we've been able to do is give uh, have subject specific programs. So we've been able to use the, the uh, flexibility of virtual programming to do maybe a half an hour program just on being pre-med or what it means to be in the STEM fields or what it means to study uh, studio arts. So we've been able to do much smaller, more focused programs um, for students to hear from counselors and hear from faculty and learn more about what it might be like to study in those areas. Um, in addition to that, we've replaced our in-person tours with interactive tours. Um, we have some of those taped uh, and others where you, can, where you can actually attend a live tour because our students are mostly on campus. So they're there giving tours uh, on that given day and are taking questions from students. It allows you to see some of the facilities and get a sense of the layout of campus. So in addition to all these things, some of them, um, I'm just gonna go back for a moment. Some of them are going to be uh, live and some of them are gonna be taped. I think there are some tremendous, as difficult as this current period is, I think there are some tremendous benefits to this. First of all, the access does not depend upon your location. 
Um, you don't have to travel to any of these. We're all sitting in our living rooms or our bedrooms right now. So this gives you quality of access and programming from colleges around the United States. Um, it, it's sort of a level playing field for everyone. Um, we're also able to be much more granular and specific than we ever were before in our live programming. And as I said before, we've given you the opportunity for individual interactions through meetings and interviews. It's also a much more flexible schedule. Um, we have programming now on the weekends, at nights, even on a Sunday afternoon. And because it's virtual, there is uh, no capacity limits. You're not gonna be shut out of a program that you intended to uh, be at. And as I said before, also many of them are taped. So you can also go back like this session, go back and listen to them again. Um, so I guess in summary, although none of us would wish to be in the situation we're in, um, it has given, it's had the benefit of giving you access to much more material in the college search process than you ever had before. Now, depending, this is the, the transitional part, depending upon how the next few months play out um, with the vaccine coming, it's very possible that college campuses will open up again for in-person information sessions and tours, perhaps during the summer or the fall. So you still might have the opportunity to see the places that you're looking at, especially the places that are local in person. Um, but by the time you do this, you should have your list narrowed down. So if that is the case, you're gonna be doing the uh, sort of the general and the virtual before you have the opportunity to do the in-person. It might really be the last part of your search. But the good news is, is that hopefully you will be able to get to some college campuses and see them in person. Because I, I have presented all the uh, benefits of virtual programming, but they really don't replace you having the benefit of getting to a to live to a place and seeing yourself there. And the other thing that I would mention to this is whether it's a virtual program or it's a live program later this year, um, keep records of your thoughts as you see these different campuses, because um, your impressions of them will be really helpful on the application as a resource for when you have to answer a critical question that all of us have, why are you interested in applying to Boston University, Harvard, Brown, Boston College? We're all going to ask you that question on our application. And if you keep detailed notes and impressions about what you're seeing from the virtual programming, it's going to make it easier for you to be able to address this question when it comes up. Now, I'm just going to briefly transition, as I said in the beginning, to giving you a sense of what colleges look at in this process. As you're searching us and as your role in this process is to find the places that you feel will be a good fit, our job in college admissions uh, is to find those students who we will be, a, who we believe will be a good match for our institutions and who are gonna succeed academically on our campus, but also will succeed socially and will enrich our campus communities. That's what my colleagues and I are involved in at this moment in reading applications to determine which students we are gonna invite into our first year class. Now, we do this, we make this decision by looking at a variety of different factors. First of all, we're gonna spend probably the most uh, majority of our time in review of your application looking at your transcript. Your transcript is a three and a half year record of the work that you've done from the beginning of ninth grade all the way until the middle of your senior year. Now, in that, we're looking, first of all, at your courses. How many years of solids have you taken in, say, the five major academic areas? That's English, math, social science, natural science, uh, as well as foreign language. So the number of years of courses you've had and also how you plan for your senior year, the courses that you are gonna be taking next year. Senior year is that first half of senior year is gonna be really important to us. So we wanna make sure that you have uh, continued your success into that last half year that we will see. Now also as part of this, we're not only gonna look at your courses, but obviously the grades that you've received, how successful have you been in these? And what is the trend in those grades been like? Ninth grade might not be the year you're most proud of. It might have been that tough adjustment year to high school, but your grades have been heading steadily uphill since then. That's a trend we love to see. And again, finishing on a strong note is going to be important to us. Now, we also look beyond this at the rigor of your program. How much have you challenged yourself, pushed yourself to take the best courses for you at Andover High School? 
the courses that are going to allow you to be successful. So honors level courses, AP level courses, your performance and upper division courses is going to give colleges and universities really the best indication of how well prepared you are for the rigors of our classroom. And again, what we look at might be different from one subject area to another. Um, now, that might be a student who's coming into a division like engineering. Obviously, we're going to be looking really closely at your math and science courses. For example, at BU, we like to see that students who are coming into engineering have taken calculus and usually a year of lab physics. Now, a student coming into journalism, we might be looking a little bit more at their English classes or their other writing content courses. So that's where the focus might be. Now, also, we realize with the pandemic, um, there have been some shifts in what you might be able to take at Andover High. We realize that a lot of high schools out there last year shifted into a credit, no credit for a semester, um, and there might have been restrictions on the types of courses you could take. Andover High School is really good about letting colleges and universities know about what those restrictions have been and letting us know the context and the choices you've had to make um, during this period of the pandemic. So they have been upfront for, with us, and we take that into consideration in our review of your application as do all colleges and universities. Now, another factor we're going to be looking at will be recommendations. Um, those are from teachers and counselors. Your counselor is going to put you within the context of your class to perhaps let us know um, why you've made the choices you have in terms of the academic work that you've done, how you pushed yourself to take extra years of maybe math or a foreign language, how you've been a leader in the Andover, uh, Andover High School campus community. Your teacher will give us a glimpse of you in one particular subject area. Uh, let us know perhaps how you've improved your writing skills in your upper division English class or how you've come for extra help in chemistry class. So they give us two very different views of you, but those perspectives are going to be important to us as we think about your entry into our academic world. Now, we're also going to be looking at your extracurricular activities. Um, what you've been involved in beyond the classroom. And that's gonna be different for every student. For some of you, it's gonna be a passion for the arts or athletics. For others, it might be a passion for service, or uh, it might be your work on creating a literary journal at your school. Now, one of the things that has changed the most, we realize, has been your extracurricular activities during the last eight months. What you were doing in grades nine and 10 might not be what you've been doing in the last year. I realize that that's uh, particularly uh, true of students who have been involved in athletics, who have had their seasons canceled, or students who have been involved in performance music. So those activities have changed. We fully get that. All of our lives have changed. But continue to let us know how you've been engaged in your, your school and community. How has that changed? How has uh, COVID perhaps had an impact on the work that you do beyond the classroom? Um, we have all been uh, kept away from those things we enjoy doing. So we fully take this aspect of, into consideration when we're reviewing you for entry into our class. But for your activities, we do get a sense of how you might engage in the world of our campus. What are those things that you might contribute to our clubs and organizations and how might you enrich our campus community? Now, another factor for us will be your essays. Um, now, most colleges and universities out there will take the common application. Some of us take the coalition application. And generally on these, you're given a series of about seven or eight prompts that you can write on. Uh, is there a person in your life who is important to you? Is there a time in your life when you might not have lived up to your own expectations or when you overcame a challenge? So it's not too early to be thinking about um, what might you like to write on? How would you like to present yourself to a college or university in about 500 words? Um, the, the purpose of the essay is to really help us get to know you a little bit better, to see how you organize your ideas and, and put them down on uh, in an essay. But also, it's really where we hear your voice come out, where we get to meet you and learn a little bit more about what you like. The essay is different from every from one application to another. And it really is my favorite part of the application and the favorite part of many of my colleagues, because we get to hear from you. Um, we get to learn about what's important to you. And as I said before, in addition to these general essays, you, there's usually a school specific essay. So be thinking about why you might be a good fit for that particular institution. Now, another factor will be standardized test scores. 
And this has probably changed the most in the last year. Many institutions out there, given the disruptions of the spring, uh, decided to go with a test optional policy. Boston University is one of those institutions, which means that in the last year, um, if students were not able to take tests, we gave them the opportunity to submit their application without them. And it really wasn't a choice for many of the current seniors because they simply didn't have the opportunity to take the test, or if they took it, they only took it once. So I think it's gonna be important as you look at colleges in the coming year to see what their test policy is. Some of us announced a test policy for one year, like Boston University. Some uh, announced that they were going to be going test optional for two or three years, and others announced that they were changing to a test optional policy permanently. So I think as you look at colleges in the coming year, it's good to make sure that you have an understanding of what that test policy is, because it might not be the same one that if you uh, that seniors at your high school who are applying this year went through. Um, but do realize what it is and realize that we have the utmost flexibility um, with test policy. For those of us who have gone test optional, we have been putting much greater reliance on your work in the classroom and all of the other factors. Tests have only been a small part of what we look at. Um, and if you submit them, it is something we take into consideration. But we, those of us who have gone test optional are fully confident that we can conduct a thorough, holistic review of your application in the absence of those test scores. The only other thing that I will mention that sometimes factors in, uh, if you are one of those students who is thinking of applying to um, an arts school, whether that is music, theater, or visual arts, there might be an artistic evaluation. And that can either be an audition or presentation of a portfolio. Um, this isn't true of every institution, but it is important to know because that's an additional, uh, that's an additional requirement that you'll have to fulfill to be considered for one of those programs. So if you're thinking about the arts, always a good idea to find out if there is an additional artistic evaluation that goes uh, as part of your application process. And finally, just to wrap up, a couple of final pieces of advice. Um, first of all, own the process. And this is different for those of you who are in the audience. First of all, for the students, Take control of this process. You should really be driving the bus on this one. Um, remember that you are the ones who are going to college. Although you are going to be supported and get the advice of a lot of other people, you are going to be the ones that ultimately have to make many of the decisions. So make sure that you are engaged in the planning of this college search um, and that you are an active part of it and that your desires and interests are being addressed in this process. Parents, support your sons and daughters. Um, it's important to, to realize that you are the people who know them the best, but also realize that you're not the one who's going to college. Um, make sure that they have access to the resources they need to be able to make the best decisions and also uh, support them and give them advice in the process. And also um, support one another in this process. As I say, you know, you know one another very well. And you're gonna be talking a lot about the college search process and the application process during the next year to year and a half. So the last piece of advice I would give you is find some time to not talk about the college search process. Find some time to just, if it's a, a, a weekend or a dinner, to talk about other things because it, it you don't wanna have your lives consumed by it. It is one part of your life, but there are so many more important aspects of your life. So take some time to step away from it. Also realize the benefits that you have in this process. First of all, you have plenty of time. It is only January of your junior year. And with virtual programming, as I said before, you have a lot of benefits. You don't have to plan a lot of trips in the spring like students in previous years. Um, you can do a lot of this from the comfort of your own living room and do a great investigation without going anywhere. So make the most of the time that you have and also those tremendous resources, not only college, school and college programming, but also take some time to spend, um, uh, spend some time with your counselors and really ask them the questions that you're gonna need uh, to really conduct a good and effective college search. Um, also, this might seem strange, but relax. Um, you've got this. Uh, think of the college search process as a journey and be open to what you find along the way. Some things are gonna surprise you. The colleges that you might right now think are the places that you absolutely are going to attend, 
once you start doing and going into greater depth on the search, some of your direction might change. So be open to changing your mind and be open to the discovery of finding new things. I think it is part of the of the the fun and the revelation of a really well conducted college search. And enjoy the process. This, although this is a stressful time in all of our lives, the opportunity to plan for that next step in your life is um, wonderful. You are going to see so many things and discover so many things in the next couple of years. I am really excited for all of you. So please enjoy the process as you go through it. Um, and I'm confident that in a year from now, as I said in the beginning, you will all find a place that is going to be the right fit for you. So at this point, I am going to stop sharing my screen. And close Great. Out, and I will turn things back to the counselors. But thank you so much for allowing me to be with you today and to share some of these thoughts. Thank you. Great. Pat, I really want to thank you um, again. Um, specifically, I think it was really helpful given that we are in this pandemic right now and sort of um, outlining that for us because it's new for us as counselors. I mean, we worked with um, our seniors and we're still working. We still have seniors that are you know, finishing up their applications. But again, looking at this next class, um, because we went out March 12th was our last day, you know, as it was for many schools. Um, and so we're looking at our programming a little bit differently as well, but it is encouraging. And I think you were hopeful that, as you said, that depending on what happens with the vaccine, that, you know, many of our current juniors and their families are going to be able to probably see their campuses at some point. And I think by the time they're getting ready to go, which again, is very encouraging that they're, fall of their freshman year is going to hopefully look a little more typical than what we're what we've what we took for granted for so many years in the past. So right. I really thank you for you know letting kind of explaining that process and and the aspects that are exciting for our students such as the virtual tours and the info sessions and the and maybe the the smaller sessions that are specific to particular majors or particular activities um, and and we're here as guidance counselors to kind of help you as students figure that out through SCORE and other sessions and workshops that we're gonna have for you. So thank you, I think that was great. And as, as Ms. Martin said at the beginning, I mean, this is an aspect when you ask most guidance counselors why they went into this profession, um, partly was that we wanted to help students and help others, but we really enjoy this college discovery and, and this journey that as we like to say, and some of the students probably are like, oh, here we go, the journey, the journey has started. But we like to help you with this. We're like your travel tour guides for this exciting uh, journey. And we do think it's an exciting time. And you know, we are, we're here and ready to help you. And we, we thank you also, Pat, for the shout out for your counselors, because you know we do work hard with you and your families to try to make the best fit for you and to help you along that process. And that being said, we're in the we are um, in the process of creating uh, or finalizing the admissions calendar for our juniors and their parents pretty much from now until the end of this year. And then again, kicking it up again, what what happens in the fall when you come back as a senior? And we have a number of events um, planned for you that I think are really going to help you. And again, they're going to be uh, virtual and they're going to be taped so you can always go back um, and then the opportunity to meet with us individually. So soon, you know, probably even next week, you'll be getting more of a calendar or sort of an outline of events and every other week or so from now until you finish this third and fourth semester, you're going to have information and, and um, some steps to do for this process. Um, and what I have found from most of our seniors and those of you who have older siblings have gone through the process, if you're kind of meeting those milestones that we set up for you, it's really not that um, difficult of a process in, in, you know, it's very manageable and we're here to help you, you know, get that um, going forward. Um, we also uh, know that uh, given the options and discussions around the testing that, you know, it's tenuous right now. Um, we're not offering ACTs as of right now. Um, there are some SAT dates, but we don't know if those are really going to be happening. Um, you, 
we on top of it because again, let's lose power when you were supposed to take the PSATs. And so that got canceled for you, which some students were like psyched and others were wondering what's happening. And that's happening again, the end of, of this month. And then we're gonna have a workshop and information around standardized testing and helping you figure that out as well. Um, I think what I really like is when Pat starts this talk, and, and we appreciate that he's willing to do this with us, about the self-assessment, because it really does start with you and, and, and what you want and what you need. And some of you might be very clear and you know you want to go into nursing or a specific program. And, and, but there are many of you who are like, I have no idea what I want to do. And that's fine, too. We have some opportunities where you're going to be doing some self-assessment, working with us in, on your SCORE program and helping you figure out. But most of the students who go off to college in the fall after they graduate go undecided. So you're also in a great place if you're not sure. And I don't want students overly worrying about they don't know. That's fine. You may not know, but you'll eventually, the college will help you figure that out as well. And then I, I also really like um, the idea that, you know, you um, have opportunities to kind of engage with the schools that you're interested in now. Um, and as, as Pat said, that sometimes having that info session or um, that virtual tour experience at a school that you've known you've always loved either strengthen, strengthen that interest for you or you might find hey, maybe I don't want a large school, or hey, I'd like the small school more than I thought I was going to like it. Um, and so that discovery and opening yourself up to the discovery can be pretty exciting. Um, most of our students here at Andover apply to a mix of schools. They will have small, private, liberal arts college to large research, um, public and private universities, and everywhere in between. I've got students very rural and applying to New York City. And um, you know, we also support that and think that's great too, because where you are today and where you are a year from now, and, and most likely it will be a year from now in May that you have to make a decision, um, you know, it might change a little bit. So, you know, we want you to have those options. Um, one of the other things that we're gonna do, because again, with this Google um, uh, live stream, so to speak, um, the live question period is is not being able to be offered. However, um, we are going to be sending out a survey to all of you, um, where you can op where you'll have a chance to have open ended questions, and then we're going to look at it and get back to you pretty quickly with some answers to those questions. If the question is very specific, then I would encourage you to reach out to your guidance counselor because he or she is it has a has been monitoring you and been a part involved with you for the last um, three years or two and a half years and we'd be better able to answer that question. If it's a more general question, we're happy to answer those for you. And then if there's something specific for BU, you know, Pat McNally is available to answer questions or I can reach out to him as well. Um, we always have a number of students who apply, are accepted and go on to BU. Um, uh, is there any other things that you want to add, uh, Melissa or Pat? To this wrap up at this point or no I think you know I think we got a lot of great information today um, and I think the most important thing at this point you know just to kind of round it all out is like pass it at the end enjoy this process um, you know it's a it's a little nerve-wracking it's a little scary it's a little daunting um, but you know as counselors we do this every single year with and you know 65 sometimes students um and you know we enjoy it and and we're here for you every step of the way so you know we hope that it's exciting for you as well um and so that's it you know we, we're so thankful for everyone um who has logged on with us and who's uh who viewed this video and we hope it was helpful and we look forward to seeing you all again soon yes thank you so much thank you again pat thank you thank you everybody I know.